Zion, the beautiful city of God. Pilgrims. Hello, dear pilgrims. Hello, dear sojourners. Remember, we are pilgrims. We are marching to that beautiful city. And every child of God who have heaven on their minds or who knows that they're to make heaven their final destination. Hold on to that promise. We are marching to Zion because this world is not our final home. Remember now. So don't get too comfortable in it. Pilgrims. Sojourners. My God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We give you thanks and praise today O oh God. For your promise. We give you thanks and praise Lord God, that there is life everlasting, my God, with you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we thank you, Lord, for the promise. You are a promise keeper. And today we worship you. We thank you, Lord, for all your children who are here today. We pray, O oh God, that you will send your divine Holy Spirit, Lord, and burn fresh fire inside of all our hearts, Lord God. Burn fresh fire, Lord, within us. Let us feel, my God, the heat in our bodies, my God. Oh, Jesus, we want to thank you today, Lord. We thank you for sparing our lives from the unknown, Lord. You are certainly our refuge and strength. You are certainly, Lord, our shelter in the times of storms. And so today, Lord, we cling to you. Cause us all, my Father, to be connected to you, God. Because only you can save us in these perilous times. My God, we pray you now that you will anoint my lips, Lord God, and reduce me, Lord, to the ground, my God. Cause me, O oh God Almighty, to be humble, even now in your presence, Lord. Cause your children to hear your voice, my God. And cause us all, my Father, not only to be hearers, Lord, but to be doers, Lord, and to take your word seriously, my Father, grant us your divine peace, Lord, always. And grant that today and always, God, as you bless us, Lord, cause us to continue to be a blessing in the lives of others. As we ask these, in no other name, but in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord our strength and our redeemer and God's children will all agree and say amen and amen and amen the word for today if heaven is your ultimate destination hold fast to the promise hold fast to God's promises if heaven is your ultimate destination hold fast to God's promises. And as I open up with you all and say that we understand that this world is not our final resting place. And when I when God gave me this word and I was preparing with him, I was so touched because all the time we hear of this and we have read the scriptures that reminds us that there is a place of quiet rest, as the songwriter says. There is a, another place that is so beautiful. And we read it more than once. Revelation 21 is 
my favorite. And we have read that scripture all the time in this place of worship. To remind us that there is a better place than this earth. Because sometimes we, not, not sometimes, all the time, especially in these times when there's so much wickedness going on in the world. Some people feel that, you know, this is it. Some individuals don't want to leave their homes because they're so scared. They order things online, nobody sees them. You know, because they're afraid of what is going to happen to them. Some individuals, they go out and they drive on because of nervousness, because they do not know what is going to hit them next. They get so scared driving. And the devil in hell will lead them right into a collision. This is what is going on in the world today. So this could not be it. Why Jesus Christ would come and die for us? For this world? It could never be. There has to be something more beautiful. A place more beautiful. There has to be a place more pleasant. There has to be a place where people can be at peace. You don't have to walk and look behind you. You don't have to be in your house and put on all kind of burglar bars. There is a place better than this. And that place is in the presence of God. Even the animals are afraid. Because they don't know predators. So they would hide. And they would come out certain times when it's quiet. This is because of the world that we are living in. But God in his word had to remind us. He reminded us in his word that, 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 that in the last days, perilous times will come. All we can see today is hate, jealousy, envy, everything that is negative we are seeing today in our presence. There has to be a better place than this. Hallelujah. So we are marching to that place. Every day is a journey that we are on. And my question to all of us, have we started that journey? Because if you started that journey, you have to leave something behind. You have to leave some things behind. You cannot take certain things with you on the journey. A pilgrim is a person, and the Bible told us in 1 Peter 2 verse 11, it says, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly loss, which war against the soul, having your conduct Honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. So while we are on this journey, pilgrims, we have to let our light shine so that others may see our good works and come and glorify. You cannot be on this journey. You cannot be a pilgrim and have hate in your heart. You cannot be a pilgrim and have envy in your heart because you're going toward a more beautiful place than this. Amen. So you cannot walk with hate. You cannot walk with envy. You cannot walk with jealousy. You have to be holy Hallelujah. as God is holy. Hallelujah. It means separated. Hallelujah. All the words that I've mentioned, the hate is of this world. Hallelujah. That's why the word of God said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. A pilgrim is a person who 
goes on a journey to a sacred and holy place. And a sojourner is one who dwell for a time in a certain place. It means you're, you're on the move. You're on the move. And we are on our way to that beautiful city where God Almighty is. Now, now, why would I be in this world and behave all the time and, and gravitate to all the evils of this world when I know that there's a better place for me to live? Hear what the word said in Isaiah 11, 6, verse 9. And these are the promises of God that we as sojourners and pilgrims must hold on to. The word said, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. Think about who a wolf is. And think about who a lamb is. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion and the fatling together and the little child. Like Malika shall lead them and Mackenzie. Leading a lion and a tiger. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw. Like the ox. Instead of ripping things apart, flesh. Jesus. The nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole. Everybody knows what a cobra is. Mm. And the wind child shall put his hand in the viper's den. Mm. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Hallelujah. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. What a promise! What a promise and what a day of rejoicing that will be when we can sit in peace. There shall be peace in the valley. Who persevere Hallelujah. to the end. Hallelujah. So my word to all of us today is to daily examine ourselves. Amen. Daily examine ourselves and see where, what we need to do. To get in line with God and to be connected, to be rooted and grounded. Because this world has nothing to offer us. My mother would say, the only thing that the world has to offer us is sin, shame, and confusion. Think about the peace of mind. We don't have to think about sickness anymore. When you look around today, it is just in your, in your eyes. People are so weary. They are so hard pressed, as Paul says on his side. People are tired and weary. Some people don't have food to eat. Have you seen and, and read the news nowadays? And sometimes you see oh, the amount of homeless people all over the world. We see images of little children in certain parts of the world lying in the dirt. Suffering, no food. In God's holy city, that does not exist. Hospitals are full with people who are sick. Now we see different uh, diseases and viruses are coming, hitting little children. Doctors cannot even find out what is going on and what is causing this. In God's city that he has prepared for us. Hospitals does not exist. Morgues does not exist. Hallelujah, Jesus. So why would do we, we sit and accept all these filthy 
the things that are happening in the world, why would we settle for less when we can have so much with God? Why would we feel comfortable in a world such as this when there's so much in the presence of Almighty God that we will one day inherit? Remember the scripture. John 14, 23. In my father's house. And every day I repeat this scripture. Because you know sometimes we have to really repeat these scriptures. And we have to read the word of God. That's why the word says the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Because if we didn't read these about all these ravenous lions and you know tigers. That one day they're going to be lying. With a little beer, with a little deer, you know, rolling over together. If we read these, we will change our lives and say, you know what? I want to be a part of this. While I was preparing, I started crying. I said, God, have mercy upon me. I want to be a part of this. I want to see those lions. I want to see those tigers. I want to see all. Those ravenous lions and bulls and everything that will maul people and rip people body apart. I want to see them rolling over with the little rabbits and the little deers playing together on God's holy mountain. I want to be a part of that. These are the promises of God. And guess what? Hebrews 10, 23 to 24. Let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Who is that? God Almighty. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good work. Because if we are pilgrims and sojourners headed in the same direction to that beautiful city, we have to love our fellow sojourner on our fellow uh, uh, our fellow sojourner and pilgrim we have to love them because we are going to the same place so we have to exercise love and peace different from what the world gives that's why God says I am holy you must be holy because holiness you have to separate yourself you have to do some disconnection whether from people who are taking you down to hell or from this world and all its viruses. Separate yourself. God who has promised is faithful. He's a promise keeper. God would never put these words here and light the hearts of man to write these and then to, to, to say, oh, I didn't say that. I didn't promise you that. That's not the God that we serve. We can build our hope and our lives on this. Isaiah 41 verse 13, the promises of God again. For I, the Lord, your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. So when we are in distress, because we are on a journey. But you know who is also following us on that journey yeah. until he gets chained? That's Satan. Mm -hmm. So we have to we have to be reminded mm -hmm. that we are going to come against some humps and some bumps. And sometimes these humps and bumps are there to help us to persevere. Amen. We can look at them and say, no, 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 no. Because a child who is rooted and grounded in God should know and see ask God for the spirit of discernment because we know that the devil in hell adorns himself as an angel of light so we have to expect that he's going to come and he's going to adorn his ministers to come at us God's people because what he wants to do is to turn us back he doesn't want us to continue the journey because he knows where we are going to end up in the presence of almighty God and Satan does not want that so we have to put on the whole armor of God. We have to make sure 
that we ask God, whatever we ask for, the spirit of discernment, God, so that when they come into your presence, the spirit will rise up in you like it wants to rip you apart. Because someone is in your presence who is not the truth, but a deceiver. And we must know the deceivers, especially in these times, because the devil is going to set up a lot of traps. Yes. May I remind you of that? Yes. He's going to, not everything look nice and dainty is really nice and dainty. Amen. Because Satan will dress up a wedding cake. Have you ever seen a wedding cake? Dress it up and put a lot of flowers on it. But under there is filled with dead man's bones. That's what the devil does. So we have to be really rooted and grounded in God. This is all for our edification. Be rooted and grounded in God. Because in times like these, we can expect anything. But God promised that he will never leave us or forsake us. Hallelujah. They that trust in the Lord. And I love that scripture. Shall be as Mount Zion which cannot be removed but abided forever. He says as the mountains surround Jerusalem. So the Lord surrounds his people. From this time forth and even forevermore. Who are the people? Sojourners. Pilgrims. Passing through this evil world. to hold on yes. to God. Yes. Yes. Not to the passport. Yes. To God. Yes. Because he's the one who is protecting us yes. from the wiles of the devil. My God in heaven. Hallelujah Jesus. Oh glory to God. Isaiah 54 verse 10. Promises of God. He says he shall judge. No, no. Isaiah 54 verse 10. For the mountain shall depart and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from you. Nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. So if we have the divine Holy Spirit with us, there should be an atmosphere of peace within our hearts. Don't tell me that the Spirit of God is in us and we are all day long just, just, just behaving as if we are in the world. That is not true. That is a lie from the pits of hell. God's people will have peace in their hearts. Yes. Yes. The mountain shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you. Nor shall my covenant of peace be removed. So if we are totally rooted and grounded in God Almighty, we should go to our beds in peace. We should walk the streets in peace, recognizing that Jehovah God is with us. And I love that. And it helps me to walk circumspectly, redeeming the times. We read Psalm 16, verse 8 this morning. We pull out, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. We have to look at these scriptures and study them to understand that we are not on this journey alone. We have God Almighty. And the other thing is that we have to make sure that we separate ourselves from the world because we cannot be on a journey and looking back like Lot's wife. We have to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. Yes. Keep 
your eyes upon Jesus. Look straight in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. The light of his glory and grace. Keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So, so, so we are asking now, we are on this journey. We cannot, we cannot be connected to, 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 to no earthly things. The, the, the Bible says when we open up in, in Peter, it said we must separate ourselves. We must abstain from fleshly loss, which war against the soul. So we cannot be here saying that we are on a journey and we are connecting in fleshly things. We have to be godly people. Amen. Too many Christians are, have failed to transfer their citizenship. Too many Christians have failed to, to, to let others know that they are on this journey, to, that they are pilgrims and that they are sojourners because the life that they are not here to judge anyone because God said to leave judgment to him. Amen. But by their behaviors, you will know them. Amen. As believers in Jesus Christ, we must hold fast. Yes. Hold fast. To Christ Jesus. Yes. We must hold fast to him. If heaven is our ultimate destination. We cannot put all our eyes and focus on things of the world. We cannot lay up treasures in as a matter of fact. Here on earth. Because the word of God in Matthew 6 verse 6. 19 to 20, it says, Do not lay up treasures. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on this earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But it says, Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your for for where your treasure is there your heart will be also and this is so i i look at this and i says god your word cannot lie your word cannot lie because we cannot say that we are children of god and we here it's not wrong to have insurance and to have things for our children but but, but not to put so much focus on it that you lose all attention on God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, the word said, and his righteousness. Seek ye first. He did not say, seek ye treasures first. And if we are pilgrims, and if we are sojourners who are consistently on the move, we don't have time to store up anything here on earth. Because we are telling the world that, you know, this is going to be my final place. Let me have all these things. Like a horde of packing things to the ceiling. We can't do that. Because this place is not our final. And every morning I wake up, I said, Lord, remind me that I'm like a flower that bloom in the morning. And in the evening, I wither away. Because we never know what tomorrow holds. As the songwriter says, one day at a time. Lord Jesus, one day at a time. We never know what tomorrow holds. This morning we wake up and we're doing this and doing that. And tomorrow we may be lined up. Or line at attention in our coffin. We never know what is going to happen. And it's not that, you know, we're not thinking life. Yes, we are. But we have to, we have to realize that these things can happen. Today we are here and tomorrow we may not be here. So what we have to do as sojourners and pilgrims, let us keep our eyes on Jesus who is ahead of us, making things right for us. Hallelujah, Jesus. 1 Peter 1, 13 to 16, Therefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, 
not conforming ourselves to the former loss, as in your ignorance. But as he who has called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. And this applies to all of us. It applies to all people who are sojourners and who are pilgrims. We must live holy lives. If we have been washed and sanctified in the blood of Jesus Christ, we have to be a new creation. All things must be put in our rear view mirror and the, the, the good things of God must uh, uh, surround us each day. We must be a new person, a new person in Christ Jesus. Amen. The old man is dead. Put him to death. If we are sojourners, the old man must be put to death. My God Almighty. And if we pray to God, he will do it for us. We will not be able to do it for ourselves. But God is able to do all things exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask. This morning we read about Abraham and I, I just focus on Abraham, my God in Hebrews 11 because Abraham and I, I, I just highlighted from verse 8 to 10 because this really hit me so much by faith Abraham, Abraham if we can remember is always faithful and obedient to God. When God told him to leave and to go up into Sinai because he was going to exercise his faith. He was going to test his faith there with his son Isaac. After God promised him that the boy born from his body would be the next one who is in, in line and, and to have all, you know, be over all the earth and everything like that. So how can you tell me to offer him as a sacrifice? Abraham followed God and did everything. But when he was ready to do it, God sent a ram in a ticket. So, 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 so Abraham, Abraham also with Sarah, his wife, waited for so many years for that promise. He was about a hundred years old when Isaac was born. So he knows how to wait on God. He knows how to persevere, whatever comes. So in Hebrew, he says, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out uh, to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And we all know this. We can go to Genesis 12. And, and I will go there. Uh, God told him to leave his family and everything and go to a place that he will show him. And here it is. He says, uh, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. He said, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him who curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And Abraham was blessed by God, and Abraham followed the instructions of God and went into a place not known to him. He went into a place not known to him because he followed the voice of Almighty God. He went out not knowing where he was going, but by faith he dwelled in the land of promise as in a foreign country. He was a pilgrim. Dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the hearers with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is Almighty God. So Abraham did not know, but he still placed his trust in God. And this is a great thing. That's why when we open up in Hebrews 11, it's like without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yeah. For they that come to him must believe. <coughs> and that is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So Abraham lived in the land waiting for the future which was unseen. That's what faith is. Waiting for that future. That future. 
He waited and waited and waited. Romans 8, 30, uh, 8 verse 18. It says, uh, verse, for Romans 8 verse 25. But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it. With perseverance. That's what hope, but that's what faith is. You can't see what is ahead of you, but you believe that with God it will be something good. Abraham's faith in the promise of God motivated him and helped bring contentment into his soul. He never worried, he never cried, he never he just followed what God commanded him to do. And this is what every every child of God who is on this journey, every pilgrim, we must always look to God. Don't take matters into our own hands, but always pray. And wait on God. Sometimes he may not give it to us right away. Look at Abraham waiting for Isaac to be born over a hundred years. We never know what God, what God's plan for our lives are. So we can't jump in and say, no, we have prayed enough and we think, and guess what? The devil will come in and push something right into the midst. And you believe that it's coming from God. And then you end up, have to start the ball all over again. Rerouting. Abraham had his eyes focused. On the heavenly city. And so he was content. Within himself. And this is what we as pilgrims. On this journey. We must be content. Whatever it is. If we have that peace. That God told us that. He's going to give us. And it will not depart from us. We will be content. Because we know that we are on a journey. And someday we're going to reach that city. His eyes were focused on heavenly things. Because he knew that God Almighty had an inheritance for him. Stored up for him. That no one can find. We cannot find any good inheritance on this earth. Nothing like that. In a sin-stained world like this, there's hardly anything of promise, my God. And we are still living in it today. But we thank God that we are sojourners. We are going through. We are moving on. We are moving forward. If it's sickness, if we are sick, guess what? It's just temporary. We are moving forward. Not because we are sojourners, we are not going to be sick and pilgrim. We are not going to be sick. We are going to be sick. We are going to be tired. But today we are done and tomorrow we are up. We are moving on. We may not have something to eat today, but tomorrow, guess what? We are on a journey. We are going to get something. God is going to provide something for us. He will provide on the journey. He said he will never leave us or forsake us. He says, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, he's always with us. But there are times when we're going to, as I mentioned before, get into some humps and bumps. But they're here to strengthen us. And to say it was worth it when we reach the city. I've been through all the pain, but guess what? It is worth it. When you see the lion rolling around with the little lamb, you're going to say it was worth it for me to go through all of that. We are passing through. And these times too shall pass. Whatever we are going through. It will pass. Because this world is not our final resting place. And those individuals, individuals who are pilgrims, we must exercise faith. That's what Hebrews 11 gave us. All the people who maintain their faith in God. And even though they did not see the promise here on earth. Guess what? It's waiting for them. In that city. Hallelujah. Jesus. It will never. Never. Disappoint us. Many of us will not experience it. Abraham did not experience the promise. But he held his eyes on God. 
Because he knew that there was a better place where he will be connected one of these good old days. And it's the same thing with us. Abraham waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. And he never gave up on the promises of Almighty God. And this is who we are today. This is what we have to do today. What God said in his word, remember that he is a promise keeper. Whatever he says he will do, he's going to do it. Whatever he says that we're going to experience in the city, that's exactly what we're going to experience. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, they all died not taking possession of the land or seeing any other provisions of God's covenant. Nevertheless, they endured in faith, even to the end. Even to the end of their lives, they never gave up. That's perseverance. Because they knew that this world was temporary. They knew that their eternal home would be with God someday. And this is our reminder here today. Don't worry about what is going on. It has to happen. And we are pilgrims and sojourners. We are on the move. We have our eyes on that city. And it will come one day. One day we will reach that city. That's right. Whether it happened here now in our lifetime or we are under, mm -hmm. we still have to rise. Right. Because we still have to get there. Thank you, Lord. Job, when everything departed from him, even his flesh from his body. He said, For I know that my Redeemer liveth. And in the end, what did he say? I shall see him. Though this flesh, worms destroy this body, he said, yet in my flesh shall I see my God. I think it's Job 19 verse 25. Who I shall see for myself and my eye shall behold and not another. For I know that my Redeemer liveth. Jesus, my God. And he says, one day I shall stand with him. Even though worms destroy me. One day I shall be clothed with an imperishable body. Hallelujah. And I shall stand immortalized with my God. Why? Because he knows that this life was not all that matters. Yes. That there was another life to come. That's right. He stayed faithful to Almighty God. And God proved himself faithful to him. He's a promise keeper. First Peter 1, 3 to 5. Bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time God has already determined and reserved what we will one day experience he has set aside in heaven a wonderful inheritance that's why 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, But as it is written, I has not seen, 
nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Hallelujah, Jesus. And every pilgrim today, my God, should rest assured that those things are beautiful things. Wonderful city, paved with cold streets. My God, today we have gold uh, so enormous in price. A gold ring, millions of dollars. You can buy a gold ring for. But in that day when we reach that city, we'll be walking on the streets of gold. We'll be stepping on gold. No more pain, no more suffering. Oh my God, why would we trade that out for a world which will one day dissolve by fire? Why would we want to trade that out? I'm not holding on to the promises of Almighty God. I want to be a part of that. The songwriter says, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Can you imagine when you see Jesus? <laughs> Maybe you might not even remember to sing victory. You're going to fall on the floor and roll all over the floor. My God Almighty, I can't sleep at night when I think about what is yet to come. My eyes are open from 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning and I'm thinking about Can you imagine when I see God Almighty? Oh, uh, God, the revelation said there will be no need for light because His presence will light up the entire place. My God, I said, Lord, have mercy. I open my eyes and I'm trying to sleep, but I can't sleep. I have to open my eyes again. I'm like tormented in my not tormented. I feel so blessed in my bed that I have it on my mind. And it's not talking about the stock exchange. <laughs> I'm thinking about the city. The beautiful city. Take time to think about that city. Take time to think about that city that is promised. And think about what in the world would keep me back from getting there. It is not worth it. And to think about the place that we're going to go if we don't make it up there. Because if it's not heaven, you know where it is. Hell. And who reside in hell? Who want to look in Satan's face instead of God's face? Would you trade out God's presence for Satan's presence? Would you trade out looking in God's face instead of and looking in Satan's face? What in the world? Take everything you want to take. That's why I don't want to be connected with nothing in this world. To be honest with you, I lay aside. I have totally disconnected. Who want to say I'm old fashioned? Go and do it because you don't know what is going on in my mind here. I don't have my mind on nothing here on earth. I have my eyes on this, especially when I prepared this. It had me up every night. I cannot sleep. Because I'm thinking. What a day that will be. When we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout. For victory. Hear what Revelation 21 says. And I indulge everybody to read it when you get home. Be enlightened for what is ahead of us. The city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth. 
And he measured the city. This is John talking about when he went up on the mountain, what he saw in New Jerusalem. 12,000 for long, its length, breadth, and height are equal. Then he measured its walls, 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man that is of an angel. The construction of its wall was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. And they name all the precious stones, jasper, sapphire, uh, emerald, uh, sardius, chrysolite, beryl, topaz, every kind of bit of gold and diamond that you can think yes. of. Uh, yeah. Each individual gate was of one pearl and the street of the city was pure gold. The street yes, sir. of the city yes. was pure gold. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pay for it, just step on it. Like transparent glass. But I saw no temple in it for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb were its temple. The city had no need for the sun or of the moon to shine in it for the glory of God yeah. illuminated it. Yeah. Yeah. The Lamb is its light and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light. And the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor to it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. My Lord. There shall be no night there. Mm -hmm. And they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But there shall by no means enter in it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie. But only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Purity. In that city, Purity. we don't have to worry about scammers and gunmen and all these. Because they are not going to be alone unless they turn to God. <laughs> and if you see them, you are saved. Hallelujah. You can't be saved and hook up with God. Hi! Come on now! <laughs> Jesus! Hallelujah! Let me tell people something. Hear what? The word of God says in Isaiah 2 verse 4 I go back He shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up swords against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore, but there shall be peace. Ah, hallelujah, you hear that Putin? There shall be peace. No more war between Iraq and between um, we call um, Ukraine and Russia. No more Water in them and spray the flowers. In God's holy mountain. In that place of, of quiet rest. In that city that is paved, the streets are paved with gold. No one who is allowed, who will bring an abomination to God will be allowed. No one that defiles. Or causes an abomination or a lie. But only those, the elect of God. Yes, Lord. Now, I have to do soul searching every day. Hallelujah. Because I want to make sure Hallelujah. that I am Hallelujah. an elect person Hallelujah. of God. Jesus. And my works should tell me. Hallelujah. Only God knows. Hallelujah. My heart and me, what I have in here. Yes. Because I can laugh with you and I'm thinking about shooting you later on. Yes, Not that I would do that, but yes, people do that. Yeah, they true. laugh with you and they even dine with you. Mm -hmm. But they're thinking about uh -huh. wiping you off out of the earth. Yeah. So we have to do 
soul searching every day. Because God wants a holy people. In order to live in this city, God needs holiness, not then, no. He needs it now. This is a life that we have to live now. Nothing, just look at the world and say, you know what? Uh, yeah, please, just, just be behind me. Because that city that I read about in the word of God, this is where I want to be. And I don't care what is out there in the world. I don't want to be a part of it because this is where my whole heart is. Although certain things are not happening right now, guess what? Later on it will happen when we reach that beautiful city. I love Habakkuk because in Habakkuk, Habakkuk went through so many things. My God, so much just like what we are experiencing here today. All the hate and the war and the killing and everything that you're hearing about. He went through all of that. But he did not stop him. He said, I still am going to wait on my watch for God. He said in, in Habakkuk 1, in Habakkuk 2 verse 1, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I will answer. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But in the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarries, wait. Hallelujah, Jesus. It will surely come. So in the end, he was glorifying God. And he says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fall, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation, the Lord God is my strength. And he will make my feet like hands feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places. Walk upon those high places to the promised land. Sojourners. Pilgrims. Turn your back on the world. Do not let this world take you down. It does not worth it. What is promised to us? We can't get it here. It cannot be compared to what God has promised. And he, God, is a good God. And he wants us to have all good things. That's the God that we serve. Not like people give you a gift and, you know, they give it to you and they want to hold it back. No, God gives you freely the best of the best. So the clarion call has been sounded. If heaven is our ultimate destination, hold fast to the promises of Almighty God. We have nothing to lose but everything to gain. And in the fullness of time, we the elect of Almighty God shall join in with the celestial harpers. Do you know that there are harpers and there are people there waiting, a big band waiting for a glorious celebration. Let us hold our celebration until that final destination has ended. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God Almighty. Long harps, violins, Oh my God. Soothing music. All that is waiting. That we have never seen before. Pastor Vickers. When we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing. That will be. When we all see Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory be to God. 
We shall sing. Hey, hey, hey. A shout. Glory. Ah, victory. Glory be to God. Glory. I made it. Glory be to God. Glory. It was rough, but I made it. Jesus. I was sick and weary and tired, but I made it. Cancer ravished my body. Hallelujah. Oh, but I made it. Hallelujah. This corruptible must put on in corruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So why this mortal have put on immortality? And this incorruptible have put this corruptible have put in uncorruptible. You say, here, here, sit here, here, yes, teacher. Yes, and you get into your classroom. Mm -hmm. Him said, that's not it up there. This classroom here on earth, will all those teachers have died and gone. And I don't think they practice all these things anymore. But on that day, <laughs> when your role is caught up yonder, that is a serious business because you have made it. <laughs> and nobody can take that spot from you. That spot was reserved. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. No one can take it. Amen. And I can't wait. Yes. Yes. I cannot wait. Yes. I cannot wait. Yes. I say yes. I surrender Hallelujah. all to Jesus. Unto him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence. Daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise the name of Jesus Christ. We give God thanks and praise for the promise. We give him thanks and praise for the place that he went to prepare for us. All of us are sure to have a place in the presence of Almighty God. It's already reserved for us. And it's for us to run the straight race that is set before us and to make it over the finish line. Jesus Christ is there waiting as the songwriter says softly and tenderly Jesus is calling calling for you and for me Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, oh sinner. Come home. Come home, he says. Come home, ye who are weary. Come home, ye who are tired. Come home, ye who are frustrated. Come home, ye who are sick. Come home. He are perplexed. Come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. He wants all of us to make it over the finish line. 
He want all of us to have our place yes, Lord. in the presence of Almighty God. In that city that is paved with gold. Isn't this a beautiful thing? For us to do our soul searching and to see what we want to rip out of our lives. And to let God be the God of our lives forever. Not give it to him and tomorrow we going back. Give it to him. Totally. And let him be the God of our lives. Because it will all be worth it. In the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh God, we praise you in this place. We worship you, God. And we, we, we humbly fall at your feet, Lord. And we say, Lord God Almighty, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take our moments and our days, Lord. Take it all. Take it all, O oh God, because we are weak, but your grace is sufficient and your strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. God, with you by our side, Lord. We can never fall apart. Because every time our knees buckle to go down, you lift us up, Lord, and plant our feet on higher ground in you. So today we praise you and worship you, Lord, and we thank you for all the promises, Almighty God, that is there waiting for us, O oh Lord, to experience with you. We are looking, Lord God, in the spiritual. And we see the walls and all the ornaments. We see the streets and all the golden paths through, Lord. We see all the holy angels, my God, running to and fro. We see all the musicians, Lord, waiting for that great revival. We see you, Almighty God, throned, Lord God, hallelujah, waiting, roving eyes, looking all around to see that all your children are standing before you. We worship you today, Almighty God, and we look forward, my Father, to that great day. We pray, God, that you'll have mercy upon all your children who are here and those who are not here, my God, those who are still struggling in their faith. Those almighty God who Satan has laid hold on. Mighty God, we pray that you'll break those chains. You are a chain breaker. Break those chains, almighty God. And set your people free. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for everything that you have said to us. We thank you, Lord almighty that we were not only hearers but God will go home and do examination of our hearts and our souls. We will go into our secret closets my God and we know that your presence is already there waiting for us to come and be connected with you my God so that you can teach us your ways in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray for every soul oh God today that is not sure that is confused in their minds, Lord. Not sure if your word is true. Not sure if your promises are true. We pray, God, that you'll visit them even now, my God, and to make it plain. Hallelujah. That the vision is set for an appointed time, but in the end it shall speak and not lie. That everything that you have written, Almighty God, your promises, one day, Lord God, when it's all said and done, when this world is over, my God, Mighty, we shall know, hallelujah, that your word was true. Help us, O oh Lord, not to fall short, but help us, Lord, to seek you even now. Those of us who are connecting, Lord, with this world, we pray, God, that we'll break ties, break the ties, Lord, and let us be totally focused on you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Touch each and every one of us here today, O oh God, from the youngest to the oldest. My Lord God Almighty, 
and let us feel your divine presence in us and through us as we continue to navigate this path this journey that has gotten so perplexed sometimes God but with you before us we will surely oh God persevere to the end go before us Lord as you always do and make all the crooked pathways straight remove all the landmines Lord and the secret traps that are set for us by the devil in hell who have come to kill, to steal and to destroy rip the veil from off him Lord God and let us see him for who he is be behind us, Lord, to guard our backs from all the evil darts and the swords. Spread out your wings. Under your wings. Under your wings, Lord. We want to hide because we know that the darts and all the weapons of mass destruction by the devil will not be able to penetrate your body. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Be beside us, O oh Lord, to brace us. Hallelujah, God. Brace us and to keep us up when we fall and cause us to be steadfast, rooted, and grounded in you, Almighty God. Cause your grace to continue to be sufficient for us and your strength to be made perfect in all our weaknesses. And be above us, Lord, to refresh us with your divine Holy Spirit. Grant us your peace, Lord. And grant that today and always, my Father, our Father, our Father who art in heaven, as you bless us, continue to cause us, Lord, to be a blessing in the life of others. As we ask these in no other name, but in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. May the good Lord bless us all and keep us. May he cause his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the good Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us all his peace, both now and forevermore. And God's children will all agree and say, Amen and Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.